convert it to a tax-free capital account. In this episode, I'm going to answer the question, what to do with proceeds from a capital gain? You're going to learn some things here that are extremely crucial so that you can avoid unnecessary tax and also empower yourself to have a tax-free capital account ever after. So my name's Doug Andrew. I've helped many, many people avoid unnecessary tax when they complete financial transactions and also when they prepare for future goals such as retirement. And so I've noticed many people when they sell a highly appreciated asset, it could be stocks or whatever, but a lot of people will experience capital gains when they sell a piece of uh, rental income real estate, whether it's a, a home, a duplex, an apartment complex, a strip mall, commercial buildings. And so I have many, many clients that I've advised that are multimillionaires and billionaires. It doesn't matter how much you have. If you only have one rental property, when you sell a highly appreciated piece of real estate, especially if it's been a rental property, your accountant has probably been uh, doing three major write-offs to help you on your taxes. Uh, you get to write off the interest uh, as you service the debt or mortgage on that. You also get to write off maintenance and repairs, and then you also get to depreciate it. So what happens is if you buy a, an, an apartment building, a duplex or a fourplex, let's say you, you bought it for a half a million bucks and uh, 100,000 of it was the land, uh, but the rest of it was the building, okay? Well, usually that depreciation over, let's say like 27 years is depreciated down to just the value of the land. You got that tax benefit. Well, when you sell the property now, you have to pay a capital gain tax on the basis up to what the gain is. In other words, the basis isn't what you paid for it, the half a million, you depreciated it down to 100,000, the value of the land. So now let's say you sell it for a million, you have to pay a capital gain tax on 900,000 because it, the basis went down. So a lot of people try to do what? They try to put it off. They do 1031 exchanges and yet they end up inheriting new headaches uh, because now you have a new rental property. You're still fixing toilets, taking out the trash and evicting tenants. So when people actually experience a capital gain, my first advice is make sure you calculate uh, what the tax consequence will be uh, with legislation that is in the work. Uh, under the Biden administration, they are talking about doing away with the step up in basis on long-term capital gains. So it may not do any good to hang on to it till you die and leaving it behind to your kids because previously uh, when kids inherit highly appreciated assets, they would get a step up in basis. Meaning uh, in that example, uh, they only have to pay tax on what they sell it for over and above a million because they got a step up in basis from 100,000 up to the million. That is likely going to go away because the government wants to get more tax revenue. Also, uh, under the Biden administration, they're talking about doubling the capital gain tax from about 20% up to 39.6%. So make sure you have enough money on hand to cover any taxes that you may have to pay when you have a capital gain. But let me show you what to do with the net after tax. And it may make up for all of the tax you do pay by repositioning the net after tax money into something that's gonna be far better and less management intensive. So if you're selling a highly appreciated piece of real estate, a rental property, uh, if you're doing that because you're tired of being a landlord, I understand, okay? Uh, I'm not a huge real estate investor. Whenever I buy property, it's usually to fix it up and then flip it. I, I like to just, I don't like to fix toilets, evict tenants and take out the trash. And so if that's one of the motivations, you don't like doing that, make sure that you don't go from the frying pan into the fire by buying another like property, just trying to save the tax. It looks like that's not gonna help you out if they do away with the step up and basis on long-term capital gains that I just talked about. So what should you do? If you want to have that money on hand, 
uh, liquid and safe, earning a rate of return equal to or greater than what the real estate was doing. Now, sometimes people think, oh, real estate is a cat's meow. And then they uh, meet me and I show them how they could be earning a rate of return equal to or greater than their real estate was. And they go, really? Where have you been? In other words, I'm going to give you some examples of people who had real estate and when they finally sold it and paid the capital gain tax and repositioned the net, they couldn't believe they were earning as much or more cash flow or rate of return without all this management intensive stuff that the real estate put them through. So I'm going to share with you how you can dramatically increase your liquidity safety, earn predictable rates of return in a, a liquid account so that if you do see a real estate deal, you can access money within, within a few hours, tie it up, you can fix it, you can flip it if you want but you have your liquid account. This is where a lot of my clients who are real estate developers, real estate investors keep their working capital. They do not tie it up into the properties. And I'm going to show you how you can do this. Now, if you're already going, Ooh, uh, I know somebody who should watch this. Yeah. Share this, uh, click subscribe, uh, hit like, I want to empower you with opportunities and I would love to do that for uh, some of your family and friends. Uh, on this channel, my passion is to empower you with new knowledge and information that will help you optimize your assets and minimize taxes. So let's go into uh, what to do with the capital gains from the sale of a highly appreciated asset like real estate. If you end up with a hundred thousand or 500,000 or a million, or sometimes we have people that end up with 50 million, a hundred million, my heavens, a lot of people own a lot of highly appreciated assets. It doesn't matter what your gain is. Let's just say you have a hundred thousand dollar gain and you want that safe. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. You want it liquid in case you need to access it. Liquidity is actually my number one requirement where I keep my serious cash. Safety of principle is number two. Rate of return is third. A lot of people get those reversed. So I want to earn a nice predictable rate of return and I prefer tax free. So that's why my favorite vehicle is a max funded indexed universal life insurance contract where I have averaged. 8.2% for the last 45 years. The last 25 years, I've averaged over 10% by rebalancing. Now folks, I'm going to be super conservative here and just talk about six or 7%. But if you had a hundred thousand or a half a million or a million dollars from the sell of a highly appreciated asset, and you're wondering, what should I do? Don't put it in the bank. You can increase the liquidity, safety and rate of return because this is where the bank's going to put your money. Watch some of my other episodes that explain the dynamics of money. So if you have a hundred thousand or a million that can grow and double every seven to 10 years based upon actual historical rates of return that have been 7.2% in the worst decade since the great depression, 2000 to 2010. And by tweaking and using rebalancing, many times I've averaged 10% or higher at 10%, your money will double every 7.2 years. So a million will double to 2 million in 7.2 years, 2 million doubles to 4 million in another 7.2 years and 4 million doubles to 8 million. People go, really? Has this, has this really happened? Yeah. We have many, many clients who have had their money double every seven to 10 years by using what I call the laser fund. So I'm going to show you at the end of this episode, how you can educate yourself about the laser fund and why you may want one, two, three. We have many people that have several, and this is how they become their own banker. So if you could earn rates of return, averaging six, 7% tax free, and if you needed money, you could access it with a phone call or sending a, a form in faxing it and having the money deposited in your account in a day or two. Is that liquid? Yeah. I'm going to share a story with you uh, of one of my friends, a client who's a real estate investor, and he keeps all of his working capital in a max funded indexed universal life insurance contract while he invests in real estate. And this is what he does with his capital gains because he doesn't like to hang on to it. He likes to buy, fix it up and sell it. And that's his whole model. Listen to the story. 
So this gentleman years ago experienced a really nice capital gain and uh, he ended up with, with several places where we put his money into what I call the laser fund. Let's just use a, a million dollars where he had that capital in his insurance policy and it's been averaging between seven to 10% for the last uh, 35 years. Now, I'm gonna use the year 2017 as an example. Uh, if he needed a million bucks, okay, because this happens many, many times, he simply calls and says, Doug, uh, I need a million dollars to tie up a piece of real estate. Now, it could be a, 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 an apartment complex worth 30 million, but what he needs is an earnest money. He wants to put a million dollars in an earnest money to tie up this $30 million apartment because he buys apartment complexes where the seller wants out they don't want to put a bunch of money into it. He fixes them up and then he has uh, buyers ready to go for fixed up properties. He, this is what he does and he makes millions doing this. So he says, send me one of those forms. Now it's a one sheet. He puts his name and he puts his policy number at the top of this form. And then the form says, would you like to withdraw a million dollars out of your insurance policy? Or would you like to borrow a million dollars? Guess which box he checks? Borrow. Why? Because if he withdraws the million, yeah, he can use that and tie up the piece of real estate and probably a year later, he'll put it right back into this working capital account. But he understands how money works because the insurance company says, you can borrow it. One of two ways. You can do a zero spread net zero loan. That means you can borrow and we'll charge you 2% because you have a million with us. That's the collateral. So we'll loan you the equivalent of how much money you have on deposit here. We'll charge you 2% and we'll keep crediting you 2% on that. He can do that. But if he feels like the insurance company's doing quite well with his money, which they were, he can use the second choice anytime he wants. He borrows the money at 5% or four, let's say, say five. Wait a minute. He borrows a million and they're going to charge him 5%. That would be 50 grand in interest. Well, yeah, that's what banks would charge him, but they charge him five, but guess what? They credit him on the million that is still sitting there because he didn't withdraw the money. He borrowed against the million that is still sitting in there earning interest. He keeps earning that rate of return. There are many, many years he has earned 10. Did you hear that? He borrows at five and he keeps earning 10% on that money. In 2017, one of the accounts he borrowed and he paid five and earned 16. Another one he borrowed at five and earned 25 that year. This is indexed universal life. You borrow a million dollars, the insurance company charges you 50,000. You don't have to write out a check. They automatically deduct it out of the 250,000 that he made that year. 250,000 minus 50, he netted 20% or 200 grand tax-free growth on his million while he was using that million to buy a $30 million apartment complex, fix it up and turn around and make several million on that one. Folks, this is how money works. This is what you can do with a capital gain. Keep it as a working capital account so that if you want to dabble in real estate or do whatever you can, otherwise just let it sit there and grow, doubling every, you know, seven to 10 years. But here's the key. The key is to have that money in a safe place, earning predictable rates of return tax-free. If you want to learn how to do this so that your money can not only grow, but when you need it, you can access it. But let's say you just want to turn it on for income. People are shocked when every million dollars they accumulate in what I call the laser fund a max funded indexed universal life. Every million can generate $60,000 to $100,000 a year of tax-free income without depleting principal. It knocks the socks off of IRAs and 401ks. You can learn why in this book. So if you'll go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R, fund.com, shown here on the screen, and uh, you can claim your free copy of this book. It retails for 20 bucks. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost and I'll pay for the book. This side is 200 pages with all kinds of charts and graphs. 
This side contains 62 actual client stories and examples of how you can do this. And there's some specific stories in here of people who took capital gains that they realized repositioned it into the laser fund and they were never happier.